Good morning, everybody, and happy Monday. Good morning, Andrew. I had a little bit of a rough start this morning, but we're we're rolling. We're, we're out there. We're doing stuff. We're getting there. We're getting there. Why, thank you, Andrew. I do, too. I, I, it's like, well, it's, it's a very jazzy tune. It's like a sweet spot. Exactly level. So otherwise, this would just bother me forever. Yeah, I like the jazzy tune. It's got kind of a, a nice upbeat sort of feel to it. Um, you know, it's still plugged in, are you? you are. I'm gonna go ahead. It's been kind of a weekend. Um, I ordered a new computer, which is now under construction and being built, and that's kind of fun. So we'll be replacing this machine. That xylophone stuff, you know, I can turn it down though. I don't have to have that xylophone stuff going. I've been meaning to build a new version of my music because the xylophone things bother you, and I get that. And that's that's totally cool. I only have that xylophone stuff because it was the first thing on the list. Um, I actually want to make like a more upbeat version of music, you know, just in case we kind of get more jazzy and stuff like that. So, um, that's kind of where I wanted to go on that one, but it's, you know, it's a thing. So anyway, I'm, I'm, I turned music all the way down through the xylophone part. I'll just turn it down. It it goes on for about 11 minutes. So just remind me to turn the music back up. So, okay. So today, I actually have zero clue what I'm working on today. I am so scatterbrained. Oh, you know what I should do is finish working on Pikachu versus uh, um, uh, Stitch which is under my individual pieces and not in fact under my individual pieces. Well, that's that. So we'll go on ahead and just spin up Photoshop because it is one of the, the stuff, the things that I did last. So it should be on my fast recall. We'll do that. One of the things that I'm trying to do that I really want to kind of give a, a concept of here is how long it takes to do these pieces. I consider myself rather quick. I mean, I, I'm not slow. Um, I mean, I'm not super fast either, but I'm not slow. And it's taken already two shows so far to get to here. So that's four hours. So we're four hours into this piece, right? And so I kind of like to give an example of how long it takes to do these things, because I feel like that's something that people don't know. And they think, oh, come on, it takes you a minute to do these. So why am I paying? Why, why are you asking me to pay you, you know, 70 bucks, 100 bucks for it? You think about something that takes six hours because it's just three shows. So if it takes me three shows to do this, then that's six hours into this piece. So if you want a piece of this quality, we got to go up to six hours. Let's go ahead and share the screen and we'll get started. There we go. And actually, got to click the spotlight and put me put me in the little. Why do the little thing? I like the little. Click them both and then put that as spotlight. We go. They changed all the controls. 
they changed all the controls last last week, and so I'm still kind of catching up. All right. So we were working on the background here on this. That guy's dead. Let's just charge him. Man. Nope. Tablet's off. And this is the reason why, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to replace this computer. Let's restart the tablet. We're just rebooting the tablet over here. All right. Still no control. Okay. We just have to. There we go. Now it should find the tablet just fine. There we go. That's the way to do it. The theory is that the tablet is one too many USB pieces on my on my system and my computer just doesn't have enough power to power it. So that's the ongoing theory and one of the reasons why we're replacing the computer. The computer is being built right now and Sorry, we'll, not, sure. not you, different computer. All right, let's get to cracking here. We're on layer six, which is this guy here. <clears throat> layer two is, hey, Fred. Layer two is, Fred, about halfway through today, we'll, we'll work on one of your pieces, unless everything starts to fall apart here, which <laughs> could happen. Um, a new computer is being ordered, so we're going to be working on that. That'll be interesting. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use my watercolor brush. Bring it down a little here. Um, nope, undo. I want this color right here. And all we're going to do is just going to kind of define in here like this. Fred's pieces can be accomplished in about an hour, usually. Um, right? <laughs> I'm confused. I'm sorry, guy, but I can't do that for you. Mm. We laugh. <laughs> I laugh. You laugh. The computer laughs. Just saying. You never know. Okay. So all I'm doing here is just going through here and I'm just kind of defining out the shadow here. And I'm actually going to take this color here because I like it and it'll define this side. Now I don't have to worry about this anymore. <laughs> One of the problems we've got is once you take away the line work, you can't see anything. So we've got to go in here, here and do something with the line work. All right, I'm gonna bring this down a little. We're just gonna do this. All right. And this is just saying, hey, this is the edge of this line work right here. This is just the edge right here. We do the same thing right here. I am assuming
that Oh, that's true. I don't know. Well, you know what? I am not redrawing this picture, though, to put extra arms in. I mean, you're right. His little attack mode he usually has. Except that he didn't whenever he whenever he attacked the city. When he stomped on the city, he didn't do it. So, I don't know. It's a good question. Still going in. I like his little antenna. They're funny. I should have put those in. The antenna I might be able to pull off. But I feel like if you're not going to put in his uh, extra arms, then his antenna are probably not worth it either. <laughs> They'd look funny. They'd be out of place. They wouldn't fit well. You know what I mean? Okay, so what I'm doing here is just trying to define the uh, shapes. I, I think we're thinking too much on this particular piece. <laughs> it is a fun piece. I could probably sell it at conventions up until somebody sues me. Um, <laughs> but it's a fun piece. Truth is, I probably won't sell it at conventions. I'm just really having a lot of fun with it um, here. I think the biggest thing is I just want people to know how long it takes to do these pieces because this is not an easy job. Um, and I think everybody kind of needs a little bit of a reminder every so often. These aren't easy things to do. I know there. I think the speed draws are not helping us as far as artists go because they not only do the artists compete to try to draw things faster, but they also like speed up the video to three times or four times speed. So <laughs> they're, they're, they're running at a much faster speed. And uh, I don't know if this should be purple like the, the brass back here. I feel like that's probably not the right color. So I'm probably not going to go for this. I'm going to go for a more yellow color for, for the lock up front. Um, and I actually kind of like this somewhat bluish, bluish brown that we get from having a half illuminated thing. So I'm going to go for that. I'm going to just put this in here and like this. And then we're going to define this lock later on. But for right now, this is what it looks like in the shadow. So we're going to do this. We're going to bring this lock in. Right, we're doing this. We're gonna bring this around to the top up here. We're gonna then define a little bit of maybe brass colored front, but that's probably too, <laughs> it's too much. I want it to be a gold of some sort, which is gonna be more like that. Let's raise the size of this up, right? And it's not going to be gold if that happens here. That's okay. We can come back in and we can work this in and that's what we're going to do. We're going to work this in.
Okay, let me just put the locks top right here. Now, all I've done right now is just put in the base colors. So, this is not even remotely going to be the final product. We're going to go on ahead and lighten it up. I'm going to go on ahead and go to yellow over here. And I'm going to just come back through like this, right? It's got a number of colors that are going to come back onto it like this. Raise it up a little. Right, right now. Kind of come back around like this. And we're going to come underneath it like this. I know what I'm doing is just adding this yellow in to kind of even it out because I think that peach was not the right color. It's not the color I wanted. Um, and I'm not feeling like that's the right combination of colors in here. But I do like one of these kind of medium there like that, kind of going like this. That one works. So if we kind of go back in here, we just do a little bit like this, it's just to indicate there's light inside here. Then we take this and we just come along like that, like this, and right here. And we're just putting shine in, right? This indicates that this has got a little bit of a shine to it. It's a piece of metal. Um, you can feel that. I feel like it should also be stuck out like remember these locks. I remember these locks when I was a kid. I think I had a, um, a, a thing that was similar to this, right? But now that's starting to look like that box that it's supposed to be. So let's clean up some of the edges to make sure that we don't have an overrun here. Right. We're just going to clean this up a little over here, make it kind of nice and tidy. Right. There's another thing right here, so I'm not going to worry about that part. Uh, I'm just going to worry about the front of this. which is gonna come around kind of like this. And I'm just going to put this long here like this. And I'm just making this line as, as subtle as possible. I don't want it to be a dramatic line. I really don't. You shouldn't be drawing your attention to it. But I do want people to see the definition of the piece here as I come around the outside. And I also kind of want to add some variation in the, uh, in the, by the box itself because it, you know this is this is a thing and it's a real object and so it's got some depth to it it's not flat part of what makes um, animation such a unique medium is the fact that you can see this painterly background and it offsets so well the non-painterly foreground, right? And it makes it, it makes the stark difference between these two very dramatic, right? That's, it's a very dramatic difference between the two. Looking back at my, my lines here, 
this is a box that's red or I don't remember what color it is, but I, I remember it being something like that. Uh, let's see if I can't open recent and see if it's got any of these. Yeah, Lilo, Lilo's bed. I'll open that one up. And I made the box a variation of these colors. I'm going to try to match all the colors in her room. Right? And the things that were in here, like, make them the same kind of colors. So I'm going to use some of the things that were in here, like, I like this pink right here. So I'm going to steal that. This box that color. So this is some kind of pink box that she has and she's using for a building or that Stitch is using for a building. Right, so we're just going to go through here and do this. We don't have a lot of this, so it's not going to be a big deal, but we're going to kind of do this number here. We're just going to go in here and do that. Right. We'll just drop the color a little over here like this, this kind of nice rosy, rosy color. A rosé. I'll just go through here and I'll just line this up. And that's all I'm doing here. So I'm just kind of, whatever was on this side is some kind of box of some sort. Maybe it's a trash can. We don't know. Whatever's the story. through here, make sure that this is cleaned up, and then we'll check it by turning that off. Looks great. Well, that's not a bad idea. That's not a bad idea at all. I wonder if I can repurpose something to make that work. I might be able to. Have to see something here. We'll see. We'll see when we get down there. I'm gonna go on ahead and just put this in. We really want to use this watercolor brush as much as possible to just lay it in like this. Right. And then we're just going to go through here and let's find something else from Lilo's room. I like this yellow right here, so we'll do that. Let's make this that yellow right here. This box right here is yellow. Some kind of picnic basket or something. I don't know. Something. Maybe it is a picnic basket, who knows. And I'm just putting in all the color at this point in time, right through here. Because once the base color is in, we can go back in and work on it. Right. 
Now we can see what it is. We can take this a little bit. We can drop it down to here. And this will be the back side right through here. There we go. Just like that. I accidentally push the button that brings up my <laughs> and when I do I end up with the weirdest stuff I'm actually gonna maybe this is like a picnic basket right so maybe it's like wicker if so we can put this little pattern on it and make it sort of feel like it's a wicker basket. Right? I mean, it's a little wicker picnic basket. And we'll go through here. And everything up here is going to be all keep working over in the left corner. Could be a poker center. <laughs> that could be cute. I'm going to go through here and I'm just going to take this like this and I'm just putting this in right here. We're not working that hard on this to make the detail perfect. We don't want the detail to be perfect. That's not the way these work. So we, uh, we go through here and we work the system. When it's, let me go through here. I'm just gonna delineate this line between the two here probably even darker under here because this is the lee side of the the thing above and so it's probably going to even be darker right so let's go ahead and drop this down to here and we'll we don't want to be too dramatic because if we're too dramatic it all vanishes. You you draw your eye in, and then you you get kind of conflict in here. So we don't want to be too super dramatic through here. And make sure that it doesn't make you go, what? What's going on over there? You know, you don't want to be looking that detailed in there. A yogi bear. Right? I have forgotten that I have put shadows down here. Put shadows down here yesterday when we were, <laughs> when we were working in or yesterday, last week. We put these shadows down to um, to delineate where the buildings were. And now I have overrun them because <laughs> I forgot. I'll give this a little bit of a bow. That'll make it funnier a little bit in that it looks like it's under pressure here. All right. Um, okay, so now we're gonna take this guy. And metal is, like always, somewhat dramatic.
Okay, so we'll do this. And we'll make sure we've got the, the rough. This is kind of going along underneath here. that we're just going to come back around like this here on this and then we'll come back underneath it like this right now I've left that intentionally harsher more like this stuff out here because it really is kind of uh, like a, a metal and so it's shiny um, it's got a certain amount of shine to it so we're going to let that go. But now looking at it, I'm feeling kind of uncomfortable with it. It doesn't look like it matches the rest of the things here. So I'm kind of aggravated about it. <laughs> so let's go back in and let's work on it a little. Okay, so we could probably find like a mid-tone here in this mix. Which will allow us to do something more like this. Right, and we'll kind of go along the top here. More like that, I think. That seems like a thing, right? Less, less sharp and dramatic, and more. Well, whoa, 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 whoa! Went a little over there, right? Like hit one of these mid tones. You can see where just in between, just doesn't quite grasp all of the stuff that's going on there, and grab that. Right, we're just smoothing this out. And then smooth through here too. Just a little bit through here. There. And that'll still work. And I can still put like a shiny spot right here, which indicates that there's light reflecting off of it, and maybe a shiny spot down here, indicating kind of lights going everywhere. I feel like this should be more under the hood here, so I'm gonna kind of go back around and do a little bit more like this. Kind of make it feel like it's all blending together up here, and under sort of that kind of, and that looks a lot better. It looks like a, a much more reasonable thing. So that's, that's, that'll work. I'm going to need to do now a little house here. There's a something here. I think those are books. I'm not 100% sure what I was thinking. Remember, I drew this a long time ago. The original, the original pencil on this is, is extraordinarily old. Um, I'm going to take some of the purple from her. Hula doll here. We're going to put that in here on the top. But I want to stay in theme with her colors, which is why I'm picking specifically colors from that picture there. Because then I can stay totally in theme just needs to be darker over here we can kind of go back here on this one like this All right like that and then we're just going to come back around here and just mix that in And if we stay in theme,
then we can do this pretty nice. We can just kind of make this straight up like it is. Um, we'll just take this purple right under here and just do that. And then we'll just do that. And then we'll do that. Right? And we'll take and we'll make it a, a light lavender. We'll come back around a little bit here and we'll just like this. We're just highlighting it. And when we pull that out, you can still see it, and it's still very clear. Um, I feel like I might actually kind of go back through and do some other things with it real quick, because now that I've taken off that outside shell, we can kind of see that the, the light's not straight, the lines aren't straight, so let's take a thinner brush and just go back in here and straighten out these lines, right? We'll straighten out this line here, too. This gives a very clear delineation to the edge right here, which sticks out. I don't remember what this was in my original sketch. I must have had some kind of Lilo and Stitch book or something that I was looking at at the time um, because all of the all of the drawing books that I have that have Lilo and Stitch, none of them have the city that he built. So I don't know if I paused Lilo and Stitch right on the city or if I, I don't know, you know, I don't know what I did. There is clearly something I'm trying to do here. I can't remember because it's this was drawn in 2015 and so it's five years old and I don't remember what I was doing five years ago. I barely know what I had for breakfast. So there's that. So there we go. That's a, a book or a something. Right there. So we've got kind of heading along this side. Let's go on ahead and put in a little birdhouse. Ooh, let's not write on things. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at where we are on this one. I'm gonna make the birdhouse a reddish color, which I think will end up being this orangish color. <laughs> Maybe this orangish color right here. Um, so let's go on ahead and do that. I'm gonna do the face of the, the birdhouse in this color. wide brush in here and just kind of do this. The truth is, I feel like this is on the side of the side of the, the, the side where the light is. I feel like the light ends over here somewhere. So we may have to kind of tone it down at some point. Try here. Okay, there we go. So we're kind of just taking this off color, the shadow color, and I'm defining the shape of the, the, dog, the birdhouse here, right? I'm going to need a smaller brush for this, and I'm just going to go through here and trim it out. Right? I'm going to just trim right through here, and I'll trim right through there. some trim right here. There. 
Now, with this in mind, now I can hit a darker color and go in through here and just hit this inner, like, where the birds would sit normally, but I guess they're not. I'm not really sure why Lilo has a birdhouse, but she does. Maybe she just puts the birdhouse in there for her soul. All right, bringing this up. And all I'm doing is just roughing it up here. That's just roughing it up. Now, when you remember that I have down here a shadow going in. You <laughs> not forget that. Or right there. nice and quiet. Oh, that's because the music was turned down. Yeah, let me turn the music back up now that we're no longer in xylophone land. That should work, right? You guys can hear the, the non xylophony music now. That should bring the music up. Um, okay, so we're coming in here, and I'm just going to bring this in. I'm bringing in a smaller brush, right? I'm just going to kind of do this and make this just kind of rough it up a little. That's what we're doing. We're roughing this up. And we'll come back through here and kind of do this number. Like that. Okay. So now all we're doing is just kind of coming back through here. And I'm going to go back through this part and I'm going to rough it up a little. Good to see you, Brent, my good friend. We're gonna just come back through here like this. All right, now I'm gonna take this guy and I'm gonna off color it just a little, just a little, because I really want this to look like it's got some depth to it. So I'm off color, I'm giving it some a little bit of just a little bit of depth, right? Making it not look so absolutely bright, and I'm darkening out in the corners a little over here and stuff like that. Okay, so now we've got a building that sort of is coming along. Now we take this. come back through on this one, but for right now, this is what we're doing. Because we're going to need to put a white highlight on the edge. So, happy little trees. That's absolutely what's going on right now. Happy little trees. We do the same thing up here. I'm going to just rough up the, the roof a little. i got to be careful because I don't want to go over my purple. But the same thing we're doing here. We're just making it look a little bit more uh, maybe not uniform. Maybe that's not the word I'm looking for necessarily, but just kind of making it have character, right? That's what we want. We really want character. So I'm just putting in the character for this. And it's okay if this is only the hint of a line. We don't need to we don't need to worry about too much on here. Backgrounds in animation are um, usually 
somewhat. Um, they're rough, not not too rough, but they're they've got a roughness to them. And I'm just kind of coming back over here, and I'm just laying this down. I'm gonna do just an edge right here. No, nope, that's not what I wanted to do. I need a smaller brush. We're going to go a little bit lighter. We're going to go right over here like this. We'll go through right like this. There. To the very peak. And like that. There. And that works. Halfway through my coffee already. <laughs> okay. So now we're going to take this blue that I've already kind of picked up for my shadow. I'm going to keep coming back around on it. I really want to indicate a darkness right here. So one of the things that Let's get close, because we're looking in here, and I'm seeing that I really kind of feel like this is not showing enough of the shadow right through here. As light gets closer to a corner, it bounces back and forth, and you lose light content, and it gets a little further away, and the, the, the light starts to rough up the corner. Um, so the corner doesn't have as much light as other areas, and it's actually a trick that you will see sometimes used in 3D to make 3D look realistic, and it's this trick that just shadow all corners. But when you have a corner, the light that's hitting here will reflect here, and the light that's hitting here will reflect there. So light that's coming in will naturally sort of collapse upon itself in this center section, which means that the corner is getting less and less light by gradient until you get to the very middle, where only the light that's hitting here is illuminating it. More importantly, Good night. See you later. <laughs> Bye, Brent. More importantly, the light here is lighting up this part, and the light here is lighting up this part, so you actually get more light heading out this direction. So, this is how... This is how that you get this darker effect through this zone. So... I'm just going to go ahead and do this. But it gets darker as we get closer to this edge. And it depends on how the edge is. In the case of this edge, it's a very straight edge. So, when it's this edge, I'm going to actually give the light a bounce right back through here. And the same thing going on, sort of meeting it in the middle. Right? I'm not going to do that rough of it over here, but there's this that goes like and that's meeting this 90 degree corner. A little bit of darkness. Right? I'm going to come in here and just be dark. There we go. And it makes it look much more realistic. With this guy, this curve down here, uh, it's a rounded bottom. And so when you think about the way that the light works at that point in time, you're going to have a corner here, and the light's going to get really tight there, but I think we're not seeing it. So you'll get a lot more of this edge being visible, because it's rounded. So if we were to take this guy here and just kind of come back around, he's going to be rounded like this. And we'll get a little bit of this edge. Just a slight bit, though. Most of this is going to be 
you know, this medium ground. That's rounded. And this guy's shiny, so I don't know what's going on with that guy. <laughs> okay, last things on this left side are these two blocks. There's two blocks on that side that uh, define over here uh, and are very important because they define where Stitch is standing. <laughs> so the blocks, I feel, are very brightly colored. Um, so I can take from these brighter colors over here, this sea green or this coral or um, you know something to that effect. A lot of bright colors. Um, I, I like this kind of tan or this blue that I can take. Uh, so we can go ahead and head back over here. I think we'll just take this guy and make him uh, sort of this tannish white or tannish blue. This and we'll just bring it in. Bring it in just like that. Here we go. There we go. And we'll bring it forward like this. I'm going to have to go back over this at some point anyway, but I want to know what its base color is. And this block's base color is going to be white. Um, it's a white block. And I think they're slightly oversized too. I mean, I know that Stitch is not a large creature, but I feel like this block, even for that, this block is a good, is like this tall, is what I'm thinking, you know, like here. It's still a big block. Um, it's certainly not the little blocks that we played with as kids, so there's that. Okay, we'll take this color and we'll drop it down. And it's in the green spectrum, I'm noticing, so I'm going to drop it into the green. I'll let it go on ahead and be a little bit more green right back here. And we'll do its shadow color. Right like that. And its shadow color is going to be... And this is good, because this offsets nicely with this. Uh, the, the dog house, or the birdhouse, doghouse. Very small dog. Um. <laughs> okay. Taking a look here, we've got this green now coming along like this. Let these two meet up like this. And then we'll let this guy define the, the birdhouse a little right there. And then I'll come back in with this white and I'll just do a, a quick sweep through here, which will give us Just like this. There. What we're doing here is making it look very painterly. It's looking like a painting. We've got a nice kind of solid. When you work in digital, you don't get all of the messiness that you get with painting. So you have to fake it. Right, I mean, we're faking in on this painting. It's not really a painting, but it looks like a painting. And we're faking it in because we do want it to look like a painting, so. I'm leaving Stitch running because I do need to see where everything is over here, right? So, this block, It's going to be a darker green even. 
more. Because I feel like the front of this block is getting close to this green. So, we're going to take this green and we're just going to raise it up a little to over here. And this is the front of this block. It's still going to look lighter, but one to one, it's not going to be lighter. Be lighter, I think. Funny. Okay. Now, what's very interesting about this is we're now starting to see one of the secrets of animation right here and happening right before your eyes. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> you'll notice that Stitch is missing a leg, obviously, because the leg is behind these blocks. So, until, I've, in, you know, until I put these blocks in, you couldn't actually see it. Well, if I keep painting back here, <laughs> it's going to be behind him, right? So I've got to kind of come around here. Oh, man, I did it again. I pushed the button. I think I chose the wrong brush to. <laughs> All right, bring it down. Here we go. Noticing is that you know just the limitations of the brush here. We really need to kind of go back through and just chop through that like that. All right, just the limitations of the brush. Only so much we can do. All right. Okay. Now that we've done this. I'm going to come back around up here, and we're just going to trim that back. I'm going to trim this over. I'm going to kind of go back through here and do this, but that's all right. Okay. up and make them look good. We're going to do the same thing we've done before. I'm going to take this and I'm just going to put a slight variation on the color. And I'm going to come back through here with just a little bit bigger brush and I'm just going to rough it up. Right? When you work in digital, it's kind of hard to make something. You have to kind of work to make it look like it's paint, painted. And that's the way it goes. So, We'll go through here and we'll do the same thing. We'll just kind of rough this guy up a little on the sides. And this will mimic the effect of having a paintbrush on there. Then it looks good. can do this one of a number of ways. I actually feel like I can cut back on this quite a bit. Go through like that right here. Now 
Now, I feel like we want to keep in sort of the pastels so we can keep kind of a, a lavender in here. Lavender-esque. It's not really lavender, but it's esque. It's very esque. And kind of keep a lavender. I want to kind of stay with that pastel theme. Even though I know blocks are not pastel, the background here has come across as very pastel. So all of the, the, the coloration, the way that things are kind of working, it's uh, coming across as very pastel. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then just define in on this. So I'm just kind of do this number here and I'm just roughing it up. Because once I go in on this other side here, it's going to be... I'm going to have to do some work on these lines and everything like that. So I really want to make sure I've got the, the uh, background roughed up before we go into this. So, now I'm going to take and get a much darker purple, like this. We're going to get a little bit of purple like this. Right here it is. And what I'm doing here is, when you see it without this, you can see now a definition of these lines. And I'm going to come back down like this, and I'm just really putting in just the shading on this. And there is another line over here, but I'm not going to deal with that. What I am going to deal with it is I'm going to put a highlight on this side. And I really need to not have it be that big. <laughs> This is sort of identifying this almost like highlighted and low lighted area that's behind here. And I'll just let this kind of go. I'm going to pull this down just a little bit like this. All right, if I catch one of these mediums right through here, I can mix pretty well through here. I'll let this one be kind of the illuminated side. And it'll look good from a distance, right? It'll look fine from here. And I feel like the stripes now, looking at it, the stripes look way too dramatic. So, we're going to go back in. I mean, from, from the 10,000 foot view, my eyes just go warp right into it. So I don't want it to be that dramatic. So I'm gonna come back in and I'm gonna drop these down. Look for more of a middle ground like this. This makes it not as dramatic and obvious, and that white's going to have to go away too, which isn't a white, but it is a very light purple. So I'm going to try to find something a little more like this, and do that. So we got kind of less less of a drama. On the, I don't want to attract that much attention to this, right? I mean it's. 
it's cool. I want you to look at it, but I don't need it to be that attentive. So coming back around here, we'll just do this. There we go. Just like that. There. That's perfect. Now for this B in the category B, it's probably in this color. I usually did that, so I'm just going to bring this through just the same color. Bring it through. Now, the thing that I didn't do with this original version was straighten up the inside part of the, uh, the uh, letter, which I find very funny. So, we can straighten that out now. There we go. Just like that. We'll bring this up. Ooh, that was too much. There we go. Bring that around and down. Cross like this. Take this purple, the darker purple, and I'm going to put it in between. There. I'm assuming that most of these blocks, this line went right through all of them. I mean, it was like behind all of these letters. Um, so I'm going to go on ahead and just do this. I'm going to add just a little bit of this color right through here to indicate that the lines went through the B. I'm going to take this and kind of come along the bottom and the back side here. Inside like this, and through the inside like that. There we go, just like that. Excellent. That just gives us some highlight. We'll take this guy. We might actually have some highlight, highlight, actual highlight, right through here like this, and right up here side of it, which is where we're going to have to go back up onto the stitch line and carefully remove this black line. That's not careful. I'm just saying that's not careful. There, there we go. 
And there is our B block, right? And I've cleaned up the line between the cell and the background painting. In order for this to look right, we need to have the background painting be one style and the cells to be another style. We don't actually ever think about that, which I find particularly funny. Um, but it looks good from a distance, so let's get in close again and let's start working on this, this guy right over here, this last block, and then we'll be done with this side. So you can see this takes some time. Okay, this is the number four. I want to pick a different color for it because they're always different colors. We did a kind of a, a, a green and a lavender. So let's do a yellow like that. All right, let's put this in as a, as a yellow. up to 21. I was on Fred's thing here, and I'm going to have to actually stop at some point here and work on Fred's thing. Because I meant to do that a long time ago, and we're getting carried away <laughs> with this. Save it before we lose it. We'll do the same thing. We're going to just drop the color a little bit, just enough to make it look decent. I'm going to come over here and we're just going to put that in. This won't take as long. We've already figured out the formula on the other block, so we already know what we're doing. Here a little bit more, just give a little bit of highlight. This will also allow me to rough this up a little, right? I can kind of do that. More importantly, I can come along this side here and do this. Okay, 
let's uh, call this side pretty good. I want to do some more, a little bit of work later because that white is way too dramatic. But for right now, we can call this guy good. Um, and we'll come in and do the other side tomorrow. I want to do real quickly some work with on a, on a Fred piece because I feel like the Fred pieces need to be at least done a little and get some work done on that. So we're going to go into my Foxtail graphic stuff, which is where I keep everything. And look at my uh, Fred pieces here. Let's pick one of these that we think we can get, get away with. I like page 116, so I'm going to change the spotlight to here while I load page 116 so that we can actually kind of get to the point where it's uh, loaded. We'll take a look at 116. I like 116 because I think I can do this without having to prepose, which would be really nice. Okay. So we're going to kind of go in here. I'm going to do this, and then I'll share the screen with you guys. So let's do that. Okay. Taking a look here, we got a campsite. We're going to work on this one. Okay. Um, we've already got the sketch down, and I kind of am looking at the sketch. And let's get kind of an idea of what's happening here. So I'm going to come in with another sketch pencil. I'm going to get a darker blue. We've got a bunny and a poke and a poke and a bunny and a poking bunnies, and this just seems like a problem all the way across. So we're going to do this. We've got kind of a pack. It, this is a sleeping bag in here. So we'll put this in back. And uh, we'll put the steak in here. Right? It's got a steak. This is one of those. For someone who doesn't actually do camping, you sure do not want to. It's not my thing. So, there we go, just like that. Roughing it is when I go to uh, a hotel. That's roughing it. Anyway, <laughs> so we'll put a piece of wood here. sort of establish here is just a light barrier. That's all we're really doing here. We're just trying to see what the light's doing. It's heading out this way. This guy's asleep. He's got an animal asleep on him, which makes it funnier. Like a dog or a cat. One of the things I, I kind of enjoy doing with this is normalizing sort of this post-apocalyptic world where everything has gone kind of down the handbasket, but people still kind of do their, their own thing, right? I mean, there's still dogs sleeping on people <laughs> like dogs are wont to do people just kind of hanging out and sleeping, doing their thing. Um, and that's kind of a, a given that this is the way that things go. Now, 
these two are... Okay, it's a cat. I can do cats. Cats are good. Cats are actually better than dogs. I'm just saying. So pokes, pokes are our rabbit people, right? They're not our rabbit people. That's not pokes, is it? Microsoft Edge updated last night, and now it takes over everything. I double click on a PDF and it goes, do you want to open this in Edge? No, no, really I don't. <laughs> oh, it cracks me up. So we're at, what is this, 116? Let's go ahead and take a look at where we are in 116. And I'm, you know, you always go back and check your reference material, right? So the poke is sort of looks like uh, almost like I want to say. Looking at uh, the short, human-like, pointy ears, long eyebrows, and pointy teeth. Would they hang out with the rabbit people? Yes, they do, because there's a picture of them hanging out with the rabbit people. Because I think I wanted to do rabbit people. Okay. So we can have a rabbit person over here. That fits. Very good, very good, very good. Yeah, sort of this brimmed hat of some sort. And give him a home where the buffalo roam and the deer and the antelope play. Spinning yarns here is what they're doing. Telling each other tales of whatever past. Warrens, right. Can I do a warren there? Do they hang out together? They do hang out together. That's a big cat. That's a saber tooth tiger. Okay, good. I don't have to worry about it. So, okay, I'll give him sort of this mantle that's in the other picture to match so you can kind of see. He's got this like mantle that he's wearing. But in this case, I'm going to have him wearing, you know, this kind of. He's kind of working his way in this, this piece here. He's got a little cup of joe. There we go. So, okay, working then over here, we're going to have this Warren. And, you know, this Warren does not believe what he's hearing here on this guy. Right? Whatever it is that this poke is telling him, this Warren's like, right, right, you're just spinning your heart. Caught a fish this big. Mm -hmm. I believe that. This big. Naturally, he's got a carrot. Or a stick. 
even though <laughs> carrots aren't good for rabbits. That's exactly what he's telling. He's like sitting there going, Hey, you know, there was this one time when I was like fighting a train hand to hand. And <laughs> oh, okay, whatever, man. Yeah, I don't believe you. I'm just saying. I don't believe you. Wondering, I don't think it was. This is one time in band camp. Okay, wait a minute. We'll give him less ears directly up. Because I kind of like you do these floppy ears. Like, right. Okay, and then over here, I need to do it. That bed roll. Still tied up. So we'll bow it when we get in here. We've got a pack on the ground over here. So it's one of those. Did you hear that story they're telling about us? And less sad. Uh, Shadows on this guy is going to go to the to the to here, so it's going to go whoop like this, right, 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 like that. And it does that it makes that noise too? So that's where the shadows are going to go. There's going to be shadows, but they're going to be way back here. Okay. Now with that, I'm going to go on ahead. <laughs> Because the pokes like the idea that they're uh, scary to other people. I get that. Okay. We'll go up a level, change to an inking pen, and bring it down a little. I like to put right around 18 on this. Eh, 17 will work in a pinch. And then 
we'll start the work. Come in here, undo that. Come in here right off the bat. I don't know if I like this pen. I think I want this one. Let's give this one a little less of a, a brush. We're too small, really, for that. So we'll go like this. Once again, I have put myself way over here, so I'm drawing against my arm. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing that. All I'm doing is just making my life miserable. A lot more control when I'm on this side. And you can see over my shoulder when I'm drawing on this side. So it's kind of a strange thing for me to decide to, to do that. I don't know why I do that. That's sort of a thing that all of us do in our lives. Sometimes we just do things and we don't know why we do those things. Here we go. Just like that. All right, we put this in and across like this.
routinely subscribe to r slash cats are liquid, which I find me hysterical and one of the funniest subreddits ever. Yes, I actually have met a couple of those. And I said hi.
Seven minutes, I don't think I'm going to be able to finish this picture, so we're going to have to get to a point where I can save it. So I'm going to make sure that I've got a lot of this key stuff in as much as possible. I want the tensions to pull across the tent. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
kill this this guy. To kill him, not duplicate him. Kill him. Nope. Undo. Kill this guy. There. Get onto this layer. And wipe out all of this under. So that's, that's pretty much the deal at this point. I'm going to go on ahead and duck out of this particular thing, and we'll duck out of this one too, because we need to kind of go on ahead and start the music for saying goodbye. Um, appreciate all of you guys hanging out with me today, uh, and I will see you all tomorrow, and we'll work a little more on both of these pieces that we just got in here. We'll work on Fred's piece. We'll work on this one as well. So, um, until tomorrow, have an awesome day.